You know, we were building a car from scratch that goes 200 miles an hour and levitates and doesn't touch anything while it's doing it. There's only 30 seconds or so of run and about a thousand things that can go wrong. I, I thought, hey, you know, we could, we could probably do this. I think we're all like interested in doing something, you know, that's never been done before and, and I think it, just, it was an opportunity that popped up and we just couldn't refuse. The original design of the Hyperloop is all focused around a vacuum tube um, because a very large percentage of energy expenditure in today's transportation is due to the air resistance that you experience. So if you can take out that air resistance, you have a very energy efficient system. It's great because it's the whole reason the Hyperloop can be the Hyperloop, but um, it's bad because it, it uh, brings upon a lot of difficult design decisions. We didn't really know how successful we were going to be driving down to Design Weekend. There were 126 teams and we knew that only 30 of them were going to advance. So we were pretty nervous. Immediately we kind of realized that even though we weren't comfortable with the state of our design, what we had produced was miles ahead of what the majority of other teams brought to the competition. I feel like that kind of motivated us and like made us move a lot faster. It was like, wow, we're actually doing something and you know, we're not doing it badly. We had been executing things correctly. And without really seeing kind of where that work would take us beforehand, that design weekend, we started to get a vision for the excitement and the possibilities of the future. And then immediately after Texas, we came back and we started building. We were originally planning to weld the whole structure together. And we found a guy on our team who was a former aircraft mechanic. He's like, no, no, you guys want to rivet this. A welded pod takes a lot of skill, especially a welding aluminum. But a riveted pod is something you can teach anybody to do. So that worked out really, really well for our team. And it kind of actually shaped the culture of our team as we were able to include kind of the base like every member was able to contribute something. As a student, to be able to come in and have essentially free reign on a design on something that's never been built before um, was a great opportunity. And now that it's turned into something that's so successful, we get to be working with, you know, not only top level faculty, but top level components too. As an undergraduate, to be able to get to play with industry-grade motors in a setting that I've totally created, and we can hook it all up and test it, is a very powerful thing. Um, and that's not something that anyone could have predicted when we started. Um, we're in our kind of final stretch of getting all those last pieces. It's all designed. It just needs to be bolted together. Okay, so this way we can flush it up from the top and the side. I just think it's really cool how so many people from so many different disciplines, whether it being engineering or business or media production, can come together and, you know, as students have just the raw organizational abilities, take all these different efforts and synergize them in a way that produces what we like to think of as, as a very high quality product. We just had a work session yesterday on the carbon team. Uh, a whole bunch of people came in. The team lead was there. He said, all right, here's the tasks that need to be done. I have an exam in five minutes. You guys have got this. It's like, wow, this, this is what Badger Loop is. This is the teams that build upon each other. We wouldn't be anywhere without the team lead being able to say, hey, guys, I got an exam. But you, know, you guys know what you need to do. This is, this is how it works. And I've really just enjoyed being around that very positive group of people that wanted to, you know, inspire change and work on, you know, the future of transportation. So the ultimate goal, right, is, you know, when I'm 80 or so, I want to say to my grandkids, oh, that Hyperloop you took to get here to visit me, I hope they visit me, uh, that, you know, I helped, I helped originate that.